Hello guys, uh, so today we're going to show you how to quickly get started with the Star Rocks shared data architecture right? or storage and compute separated architecture deployment. Right? We're going to use Docker, uh, Docker Compose, uh, MinIO as object storage, uh, as well as Star Rocks, of course. Right? Here, let's get started to see what we have here. We have a Docker Compose file here that is going to help us um, launch all of the necessary uh, containers as well services right let's up that now docker compose up and while this is being deployed let's take a look at all of the containers that we just bought right first is me io and this will be our object storage to you know act like data persistent right uh, persist all of the the data Right. And then this, we don't need to worry about this. Uh, this is short-lived to check whether MinIO is deployed correctly. And Saros FE and Saros CN, these are Starox processes, right? FE is in charge of query planning, metadata management, and this is where the Starox cost base optimizer is. And CN is a compute node. It is like the muscle of the Staros cluster, right? Uh, it's in charge of actually executing the query and scanning the data from the object storage and actually caching the data, you know, within this for query acceleration, right? Uh, now everything is deployed. Let's connect to Starox with the MySQL client, right? Uh, here I'm using the MySQL client provided by the Staros FE image. Uh, but if you have your own installed in your machine, you can use it as well, right? Let's do it right now. Uh, let's see what we have here. Show databases. Now we we can see all of the default databases. You know, Staros comes with right. Nothing else because this is a fresh deployment. And now we create a database because we're going to ingest some data, right? Uh, now we have this database, um, and the data we're going to use is New York crash data, right? It shows um, the crashes incidents that happens in New York City, right? Now let's create the table. Um, here, let's do it. Okay. Um, let's make sure that this is created. Nice. So we have the new table here. Uh, now let's ingest the data. Exit, go back to my console. Um, uh, to ingest the data, let's uh, enter uh, the Starox FE environment. So what we can do is as Docker Compose execute uh, this this container name and we're going to use bash, right? We're in. Okay, uh, now let's create some directories. Uh, the quick start directory is nothing there. And now let's download the data. It's going to take a while. Actually, it's pretty fast. So it's 91.7 megabytes of data, right? Um, and let's see how many rows we have. Um, So here we have 423 and some change thousand rows of data. Uh, and to ingest this file into Starox, we're going to use the Stra uh, Starox Streamload uh, ingestion tool, right? That is great for um, uploading any local files uh, that you want to quickly analyze, right? Let's do that. See this um, CSV file and use Streamload. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, oh, it's asking for the root uh, root password, and this is um, the Saros password within a set one. So just enter. It's gonna take a while. Okay, now we can see this is successful. Um, now we exit this. Um, let's go back into Starox through my SQL here. Okay. Uh, use use quick start right uh, 
see what this looks like now we can see limit five only showing five rows and now all of the data here right now we can run some queries um this query shows you know the number of crashes uh, each hour um a simple aggregated query right now we can see the result here now uh, let's go to the min io console to see what we actually stored in the locally deployed object storage with a star shared data deployment right the data we ingested so here the username and password you can find them in the um the docker compose yaml file right um so we can just type it in here Let's take a look. So here is the bucket uh, that uh, Star has created, right, to store all of the data as well as the metadata, right? You can see the size is only nine me megabytes. This is for two reasons. First, this is only storing uh, one replica of the data, right, because cloud object storage are designed uh, to to be very durable, right? Uh, and also, um, Star uses only it's columnar storage right it only has a columnar storage it has great uh, compression ratio right uh, let's take a look and find the starox files the data files okay so here uh this is uh the starox segment data file um and this is the starox file format that gives it incredible performance right and as well as uh, the ability to do real-time analytics, right? To support uh, real-time mutable data, right? Um, and also a little bit more about storage and compute separation. Uh, by storing data in an external object storage, persisting data in an external object storage it comes with a lot of benefits, right? So first is that you are able to scale your compute and storage separately, right? And that is great because in the real world, the data size and the amount of compute you need are not a linear relationship, right? They're not, sometimes they're not correlated at all, right? And also um, with this architecture, you are able to elastically scale your compute, right? Because you're not persisting data uh, within the node, so you can drop a node without, you know, my, da any data migration and not lose any files, right? Not lose any data. So this is great for elasticity, right? Um, so this is all I have for the demo. Um, and this demo is actually derived from this uh, separated storage and compute quick start from the Star Wars documentation. Um, and this is the data set we used and there's another data set right in another table and you can even do a join query you know if you ingest this data set in as well right and you can do this later um so thank you for uh, tuning in um uh, see you guys next time